actual Mandelbrot set is just the black points. We just color the other points so it looks pretty. So let's look at the code. Um, def draw Mandelbrot. See that there? Um, window dot set negative two two. So it just sets the window, the plotting range to be in this range. For for every x pixel in the height of the window, or the width of the window, and every y pixel in the height, c dot real and c dot imaginary get the x and y values on the screen. So what we're doing there is saying, basically, the pixel gets this actual point in the space that we're working, the, 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 the complex plane. Def iterations equals calculate iterations c. And we pass it c. Keep in mind, this is c. The starting point is c. So let's just stay inside this function for now. Def color equals calculate color iterations. So we're calculating the color based on the number of iterations it took to escape. And then fill the pixel with the color. That plots it on the screen. So let's look at the calculate iterations function. Int calculate iterations. This notation means that it will return an integer, a number. It takes a complex number, c. So z, real, z, imaginary, start at 0. Start there. And then iteration starts off at 0. So this is, we're going to count how many iterations it takes. So while the circle contains z, that's another function that just tests if it's inside, um, and the number of iterations is less than max iterations. Max iterations is the number of iterations after which we assume it's, it's just going to spiral inward and just stay inside. Um, so while that stuff is true, z equals z squared plus z z equals z times z plus c, which is squared. So we can do that because I, op I overloaded the operators, the multiplication and addition for a complex number. So it behaves correctly. It does this strange multiplication thing. And so we do that, iterations plus plus. That means we increment the iter number of iterations by 1. And uh, calculate color just it calculates a color based on the number of iterations. So we have 20 minutes left. I want to uh, blow you away with, with fr music and fractals. So I'm going to play a piece, three pieces of Bach. And yeah, they're just great. So the first one is actually not written by Bach. Oh, no. What's going on here? Uh, it's not written by Bach, but it's the Little Harmonic Labyrinth, which is the song that the dialogue in, is based on in Gerda Lescher Bach. Sort, you know, English language has a grammar. We could nest sentences inside which we can nest more sentences. We could, we could nest more sentences. And that itself was a nested sentence. So music, sort of like English, English has sort of a grammar to it. These chord progressions and melodies and harmonies particularly have a sort of a, a language in which they can move between keys and whatnot. And, um, and so that, that's one way in which Bach embeds recursion inside of music. He has these nested um, harmonic structures of chord progressions. So the chord, it's, yeah, in, in chapter 5 of Gerdelescher Bach, he talks about it. And the dialogue is modeled after uh, that first song that we heard, Little Harmonic Labyrinth. And melodies also can sort of have recursion in that they can have patterns. Um, like this theme, for example. This theme, like Bach does this a lot. What he does is he takes themes and he restates them with maybe different harmonies and uh, like embeds them inside smaller and larger scales. So, for example, I don't know if he did this, did, did this like maybe on a larger scale, um, the, the actual harmony might actually follow this sort of theme. And inside those, you know, like for a long period of time be this key and a long period of time be this key. And then when you're in that key, he, he plays this theme. 
So that's an example of nesting. So recursion per se is not there, but the result of recursion. This is the distinction between recursive processes and rec recursive structures. Recursive structures are basically any structure that has nesting to it. So English language is, recur is a recursive structure because it comes from a recursive grammar. It's nesting. And music also, it's a recursive structure, not a recursive process. So recursive process is like almost like a function that defines how you can get the recursive structure. Exactly. That's it. He says, so a recursive pr process is sort of like a function or something that defines how you end up with a recursive structure. That's exactly it. Yeah. So, so he, he's just putting like, uh, overall there's this whole thing, and to some parts of that thing, the, the thing also fits, but it only fits for like a tiny amount of time, and then you get out of that part of it, and then you run out of which is also part of the thing. Yeah. Yeah. But it's hard to hear because Yeah, it's hard to hear. It takes a really fine musical ear to hear this. And uh, uh, so, let's see, how, how much time? Three minutes. So, um, we talk about pushing and popping of stacks. So, a function, a computer function, say f, foo actually. Foo is a function, or better yet, well, no, forget it. And inside this foo, it calls the function bar. And here's a function bar. It does some stuff, and it calls maybe g. It does some other stuff. Here's g. G maybe does just one thing, and I don't know, ends. So what you have is a stack, a, a call stack. Like it, it happens in, in in any grammar, actually. That's that's sort of recursive flow. So in, in computer programs and also in English, you have this notion of a stack. So here, you do some stuff, you do some stuff, and then when you call bar, your focus actually changes to over here, bar. But you retain sort of in your mind or in the in the memory of a computer where you were, where you left from. So you, you yeah? So it's like when you do when you like try to do something, even when you like making goals, you have set goals and so on and so on. Calls? Yeah. When you have goals. Goals, yeah, exactly. So that's that's why re computer programming is tough because like you have a, a high level goal. But then to get to that goal, just like you said, you have other goals that you need to meet. And each of those goals requires some other goals. So it's actually recursive. <laughs> like, it's crazy. So the, when, you, when, this func when, this, when this program executes, it does this stuff. It puts this position A, let's say, on the stack. So this is a stack A. And then it goes into here, bar, blah, 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 does all this stuff. Then it calls G. But to remember where this is, let's call this position B. It puts B on the stack and calls G, and then does all this stuff. And then after this, it returns. And when it returns, it asks, where was I the last time? And this is what the stack is for. So where was I the last time? I was at B. So we pop. Putting something on the stack is pushing. Taking it off is called popping. We pop it and say, OK, here's B. This B is where we were. We go back to there. And we, we finish this. Once we finish this, we say, oh, where were we were the last time? So it gets A. And then go back to A and finish. Make it so that you, you have those things, right? Those are like things, maybe like parts of the music, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah exactly. Those, the other things, and part that thing sort of like reflects itself. Yeah, inside. yeah. So the dialogue, which reflects little harmonic labyrinth, has this sort of structure. It goes inside something, inside yet another thing, and back out, and then back out. So, so it's five o'clock. I'm finished. <laughs>